Right, morning everyone. Now, the last video was about warming the drum up after it had gone um, a bit saggy, lost its sound because of the weather and all the rest of it. And we took the drum apart. So this morning, we're gonna put it back together again. It's the same drum, this is the 16 inch um, Scorch Dash. Um, the skin's been soaking now, just to get it soft again. So what I'm quickly gonna do is grab that skin and then we'll go through it all from there. So here we are. Here's the skin that's been soaking and um, in spring water, don't forget. Now, as it's been soaking, all the bits have come a bit tangled up, but it's nothing to worry about. You just take a little bit of time. Now, one of the things is when you're lacing the drum after it's been soaked, you need to do it. I don't want to say rush it, but you, you need to be fairly quick because you don't want the skin drying out, okay? Too much. Um, so, let's put those to the side. Right, now, as I said, this is, sorry, you have to excuse the, the, the sniffles. Um, I'm having my uh, yearly dose of man flu. Um, right, so, I said to you before, um, if you remember, this is a 32 hole one, right? So I didn't have to take this part out, right? Which is where we've laced around the entire edge of what's gonna be the drum face, okay? And don't worry, there'll be more videos coming on right from start as well on this, but this is just in case you have to take your drum apart due to that time of year. So, oh, um, and the lovely weather we're having. Right, so. We place the rim on the skin, and this has got, this is engraved, this drum, so we need to place it so what's been written can be seen, okay? So, since I've previously laced this drum, and then taken it apart, I don't have to do any additional sort of trimming of the skin or anything like that, okay? So, and because this is a 32 hole, drum, um, there's 16 bits, there's 16 loops, I should say not bits, uh, there we go, still very early in the morning for me, um, now, as you can see where this has been soaked and kind of found its own way a bit, we have to uh, untangle it a bit. Why I'm doing it like this is these are all the problems you'll face when you're doing your own, okay? And um, you might look at this big ball of rawhide that's been soaking for a while and lose heart. Um, the thing is, is, is don't lose heart. It just takes a little bit of time just to get everything squared away and sorted out. And then once you're ready to go, you're ready to go. Quite lucky this skin's still here this morning, so I've got to put a lid on the bucket that's outside. And um, when I got up this morning, there was a, there was a fox having a wee look um, here in the bin. So uh, that uh, I soak the skins in. So right, okay. So what I always do is I start opposite myself. Okay, so I know where I'm going with it. And the first is quite a simple knot. I, there's probably a real technical name for this, but I don't know what it is. But I just loop it through and knot it. Okay. Quite simple, pull it tight. All right, and now because there's 16 loops, right, we want to come halfway round, so we're directly opposite the first knot, yeah? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, 
so when I refer to this what's going to be the face of the drum is I'm going to call the top of the skin what's going to be the rear of the drum I'm going to call the bottom okay right so again double check it's like everything measure twice cut once um, so right so one two three four five six seven eight right now because the first knot is there we're going to count that as coming out from the top of the skin so as if we're going through the loop that way okay so then when we come back to the eighth we come through the top and out the bottom okay and pull through now you don't have to pull it tight straight away we'll be working on that in a while okay So just fairly nice and loose look, nothing too too dramatic. Right, and now we've come out of the bottom here. So when we go to the next one round, we're basically working our whole way around the drum. And I do it in this clockwise fashion. So we go out, I'm sorry, we go in through the bottom and out through the top. All right, and then with the lacing, we're either going over everything or under, okay? So we've come out of the top, so therefore we're going over everything. Then into the next one. Right, so we've gone in through the top. This is the bit that most people find the trickiest actually, to be fair. Um, so then we've come in through the top. So then we drop our lacing in. Okay. Go underneath all this, so underneath it all, in through the bottom, out through the top. Then we're going over the top, then in through the bottom, okay? Then we just keep repeating that process all the way around. Like I say, you don't have to worry about it being too tight. We're going to do all the tightening in a while. And you'll see that if you are making your own drum, you might suddenly be thinking, oh my word, I'm running out of the back lacing here. But you're going to be surprised how much it's going to stretch, okay? So like I say, in through the bottom, out through the top, or in through the top and out through the bottom, and it's either over or under everything, okay? Now, when people come here and make drums, this is the bit they start getting a little bit dis disheartened because they suddenly think, oh no, I've run out of lacing. They haven't at all, okay? So, what we do is just start the tightening process. This, this loose end here, we just leave it alone, all right? There's no need to be pulling that bit about. We come to the first knot that we put in, okay? And basically, we're pulling it forward and pulling it back. We're just working our way around the drum, tightening it up. And as you're doing it, there is a little bit of a trick, all right? Because again, sometimes people find it, it looks a bit of a head wreck, really. So, um, so you take the first one, you pull it forward. I do it with my right hand. Then you miss one, and you take the next one, and then you pull it back. Then the one, your right hand always just moves one space to begin with. And then it's two. Then every hand moves two spaces. To the second space, I should say. All right. You see, look, it's getting all nice and long now. Now the thing about it is, is that the, the loose end and the first knot should end up being side by side, okay? If they don't, you've missed one somewhere. So, and then, now we're fully laced to drum, what we need to do is tighten it up. Now, don't go mad and rip it straight away, okay? Rip it tight straight away, that should be. It's, um, just be a bit steady. And 
one thing when you do this as well is is you're also finding out or noticing where there might be any flaws okay and see how much longer this is getting all the time yeah all right now just keep pulling it a little bit tighter all the time okay now to be fair I'm doing this a lot slower than I would do normally and what we're doing here is we're just checking all right all the time and yeah always check it and when you're doing this follow your intuition as much as anything all right if it doesn't feel right it doesn't sound right it's probably not right okay but what you're trying to do is get these so we don't want that much movement in the back here okay And then we just keep pulling. Now, uh, right, okay. Now, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to do one more tightening. Now, you can see how much tight that is. Now, this last one, I'm going to put a little bit more effort into it and just pull it. See how much there was there? Right, now. Now, see, there's not that much movement there at all. Now, as you can see, this center bit is way off center of the drum, right? So we've got this really long bit of lacing here. So what we do is we feed it underneath everything the lacing till it's pretty much opposite now this bit you can change it until it sits right and what you do is you use that and you pull that knot into the center see as much as you can right so and then we've got 16 of these running across the drum now so four fours are 16 so we're going to do them in fours all right so I'm going to start off with these four to begin with. And what you do is you're just taking the lacing here, and what you're trying not to do is you don't want to kind of like artificially stretch the drum by putting too much downward pressure on the centre knot. I'm basically using my thumb and fourth finger. Okay, so we start off with wrapping four. When you're doing this, you're doing it as tight as you can. Okay, all right. So, you can either stick with the four, placing the four bits together, and you've always just got to keep an eye on how tight they're getting. Okay, all right. So, or you can do a variety of things, and we'll work through these with time anyway. Okay, so, so I do four for a little bit on this drum, then I'm going to come down to three. In this process as well you're actually pulling the drum face tighter as well so so down to three then I'm going to go down to two Now, what I'm 
we'll do is I'm just going to hold this here. And this. Okay, that sounds good to me. All right now, you're trying to get it's this kind of like a thud, a dull thud, but with a little bit of a ring to it almost. Okay, now you've got to remember this skin is absolutely soaking wet, but there we are. When it dries out, obviously you see the difference, but as long as it's starting to make that drum like sound as you go through this, you're getting it pretty right, okay? So, and then what we do is we finish off with the knot. And what I do is I take the lacing, pass it over, under, and then through, yeah, and pull it tight. Now, the thing about that is, as well, is we can hide the knot. All right, now I'm going to do it three times on this one. There we go. So that's your first bit done. Don't trim these off just yet, okay? You can just pop them away and don't let them bother you. Because rawhide shrinks um, as it dries. And the last thing you need to do is trim those off way too close. And then as it dries, the knot might come undone. And uh, then it's tears before bedtime. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the next bit of lacing what we do is, oh uh, yeah, next bit of lacing. And what we're going to do is we're going to work opposite where the first one went in, okay? So it's going to be these four here. Sorry, these four there, right? Now before we start lacing, we tie the knot opposite where we're going to lace, okay? So, because otherwise, if you put the knot on this side, it'll just slide up a little bit, okay? And we don't, we don't want that. So, just a general knot. And then what we do is we slide that knot round and hide it, okay? Don't worry about these raggedy ends, we'll be trimming them up, okay? So, we want to do the opposite four. So two, four, we miss those four. Two, four, we're into these four here, okay? And then, let's repeat the process. Start with the four. as tight as you can and not trying to pull it up and down because that'd be artificially kind of that'd be putting a bit of stretch into it okay right so now as you can see we're not using measures we're not using any tools or anything like that okay so we're going to measure everything kind of visually as well, just to make sure it looks balanced as much as we can do. It's never gonna be 100% perfect as such. Um, but don't forget, you're making these by hand. You're not using lots of gizmos and stuff like that. So it's, every drum will have its own little unique kind of touch. Okay, so, so we've come down into three. Then into two. Okay. And then, like I say, over the top, loop it round, knot it, or we'll tie it off, whichever term you prefer to use. Now, that bit there is very spongy, so I'm just going to use a little pair of pliers just to give it a little bit more pull. Like so. Okay. Right, number two done. So. Okay, so again, remember, we're going to work these four so the knot goes Opposite, on the opposite side. And hide that knot underneath. So excuse me for snivelling. Um, okay, and then again, let's 
tight as you can. As I'll probably bore people to tears with saying it, you know, if you're doing this yourself and you have any problems whatsoever, just get in touch with us. On Facebook, it's Wild Irish Drums by Dahi Dove. We've got the, the website for Winter Dove, um, you know, and those of you who know me personally, just message me or whichever way you choose to get in contact with us. Um, it's not a bother, you know. We're all on the same side after all. So. Well, I like to think we are anyway. So, and then, so I've gone from four down to three. Now, you'd be surprised how much strength you need here to do this. Um, and if you're making your drum for your first time as well, don't forget, you know, make sure you're intense in there, what you're gonna be using the drum for. Um, and that kind of thing, you know, because it all, all adds up at the end of the day. Right. And now we're on to the last four. I appreciate when you do this for the first time. It's gonna take a fair bit of time, okay? Now, with the bits of lacing where you're gonna make the handles, just keep them in a bucket or a bowl of water near you, all right, okay? Um, we don't want the rim getting too, too damp because there is a join there, you know, the last thing we need is water to get in there. <coughs> Excuse me, but anyway. If, if you're getting a bit worried about it, you can always use like a squirty water bottle and just give it um, give it a little bit of a light spray, a little bit of a mist in if need be, okay? So then, so opposite side of the centre knot where we're going to be working, okay? So the final four. And this is the most difficult because these are the, where there's a lot of tension in these ones already, okay? And in my experience as well, if anything is gonna go wrong, it's gonna be here. Um, but believe it or not, if you know a little bit about the medicine wheel and stuff like that, um, you can often tell when a drum breaks, what's going on in someone's life um, when they're doing that. We've had a, a couple of funny experiences with people and because the drum repeatedly kept breaking in the same part you know so I always um, count the first knot has been to the north um, and um, so if you look up the medicine wheel and all that sort of stuff if you're unfamiliar with it and just have a look you know So, don't forget I make these day in and day out. So, um, I might, make, might have made it look a little bit easy, but the thing is, if you're doing your own or repairing your own drum, give it a go. And as I've said already, and I'll keep harping on about this, these drums that we make here are for life. So any problems whatsoever, you just get in touch. Right, now we leave these loose ends here, okay? Until the drums dry, all right? We just wanna leave them be. Because if I snip them off, flush to the knot, as it dried, it'd pull them through, okay? And the knot would, would loosen off, all right? Now, so there we go. So it's still got a little, it's got a drum sound to it. But as that dries, Need to say it's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. Okay, and it's going to shrink um, as well. Now this is this is bison on here. Now bison's the strongest skin you can use. Um, well, the strongest skin that I have at the moment, I should say. And it's a very very powerful skin. Um, so sometimes when the bison 
actually dries out and shrinks. It'll actually distort the rim and sometimes it will pop it too. But if that happens again, don't worry about it. Okay, everything's fixable. Because, um, <coughs> excuse me, as you know, we want to keep these drums for as long as possible in the most original condition that we've got. But there we go. So there we are, there's that side, there's that side. We can see the writing around there. So uh, not a bad job for first thing on a Saturday morning, I don't think. Anyway, hopefully you find it helpful. And uh, let us know what your thoughts are in the comments. All right, thanks guys, we'll see you soon. The next one should be a long shortly video that is. All right guys, have a good Saturday, bye bye.